In this video, I am going to explain about the concentric circles method. For following the concentric circles method, the data required is major axis length and minor axis length. To demonstrate this method, I am taking the major axis length as 120, minor axis length as 50. Here the first step is, draw a line taking major axis as length. Major axis is 120, that means this is the 120 mm long line. Now locate the midpoint. From the midpoint, you mark the minor axis length. Minor axis length is 50. That means from the midpoint, this side 25, this side 25 you have to take. So in this way you can mark the major axis and minor axis. Now take the major axis length as diameter, draw one circle. Take the minor axis length as diameter, draw another circle. These two, cir these two circles are concentric circles. That's why this method is called as concentric circles method. Okay. So for the time being these lengths are not necessary because already we have drawn the circles. That's why I am arranging this. Then divide the major axis circle into 12 equal parts. Divide the minor axis circle into same 12 equal parts. Give the numbering like this. This is 1 dash, 2 dash, 3 dash, 4 dash. Direction is your choice but follow the same direction for major axis circle and minor axis circle. Here I am taking the clockwise direction from here. 1 dash, 2 dash, so on, 12 dash. Okay. Here I am giving the naming as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on, 12. So direction is same, corresponding numbering you have to give. From here I am starting for outer circle. Here you have to start for inner circle. Okay. From outer circle you have to draw vertical lines. From inner circle you have to draw the horizontal lines. So first I will start drawing from this 2 dash. This is the outer circle that's why I will draw the vertical towards the vertical inside of the circle because if I draw vertical outside no use that's why I am drawing the vertical inside like this. Then automatically from 2 you have to draw the horizontal because this is the inner circle. Draw the horizontal. This horizontal also I am drawing outwards. If I draw the outwards from this inner circle, then it will intersect with the vertical line. If I draw in the opposite direction, no use. That's why here you have to use the common sense. Okay. Now these vertical and horizontal lines are intersecting somewhere there. That particular point is P2. Okay. For 3 dash also draw the vertical line from 3 dash point. Horizontal line from point 3. These two will intersect here. That is P3. From 4 dash draw the vertical. Here from 4, if you draw the horizontal also no use because that, that horizontal lies and intersects with the vertical line here itself. That's why this point 4 itself is P4. Then from 5 dash draw the vertical. From 5 draw the horizontal like this. This is P5. From 6 draw the vertical. From 6 dash draw the vertical. From 6 draw the horizontal. That is P6. Now coming to P7, if you draw the vertical here, then no use. From 7, if you draw the horizontal, that is intersecting with this vertical at this point only. That's why this 7 dash point itself is P7. Then from 8 dash, draw the vertical in the upward direction. From 8, draw the horizontal towards the right like this. Then that is P8. Then from P9 dash, draw the vertical like this, horizontal like this, then that is P9. From 10, if you draw the vertical, that is sufficient, horizontal is not required, this point itself is P10. From 11 dash, you draw the vertical like this, from 11, you have to draw the horizontal like this, this is P11. From 12 dash, draw the vertical, from 12, draw the horizontal, this is P12. Similarly, here at one dash point only you will get P1. Now join P1, P2, P3, P4, so on up to P12 with a smooth freehand curve. This is the concentric circles method, which is the very easiest method among all these special methods.